channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to take care of uh, neonatal puppies in case their mother can take care of them for, for certain reasons or it's either her first birth. Okay, so this is the girl. And she's going to eat 30 milliliters. That's right. Screaming a lot, and they're crying. They haven't been eating in like five hours. So right now they're approaching three weeks old, and they should be fed at three weeks old. They should be fed every five to eight hours. In between, it's just fine. You just have to feed them a larger amount of milk formula, but you don't have to feed them every two hours like in their first two weeks of life. Okay, so their first two weeks of life are crucial because they're really, really dependent on their mother. They're really dependent when it comes to absolutely everything. They cannot defecate on their own. They cannot pee on their own. They're not able to generate body heat. Uh, their mom usually uh, would keep them warm. So they, they don't have the ability to sugar to generate body heat. So it's really important to... Okay. Uh, it's really important to keep the wall or the, the room uh, warm enough around 32 degrees Celsius uh, when they're like a week old and slowly decrease it to 30 degrees Celsius and 28 as uh, the weeks pass by. Uh, they would usually they usually cuddle up and they you know just get closer to each other to get warm. And it's really important not to keep them separated because they basically warm each other up. Okay, in your first two weeks of life, they're gonna be really, really sensitive and really dependent on you. Uh, they need to be fed every every two hours. There you go. There you go. Good girl. Okay, she's the largest one. I mean, she wasn't, you know, the largest uh, when I first weighted him. Um, it just grew more than the others. You will need to stimulate them to, you know, to a potty because they cannot do that on their own. And you do that by rubbing a piece of cotton um, in their genital area. You first dip it in warm water and you have to do this like for about three minutes for them to, to go potty. I mean, for, to defecate, you need to do this for three, min three minutes because they're not going to go instantly, so you got to keep insisting on that. Uh, but they're going to pee instantly, like, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, sometimes uh, bottle-fed puppies tend to get constipated, and you should really pay attention to that detail. Uh, you need to monitor how often they go. And if you notice the puppy not going for 24, for more than 24 hours, you need to take it to the vet. Okay, you need to do like this to help them release the trapped air because sometimes when they when they suck on a bottle, uh, they would never really suck on air. And you need to do this to release the air. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to stimulate the puppy uh, to pee. Come on, you girl. You have your. Come on. I'm gonna go down. Okay, so I basically just uh, wrap some hanging in the paper. I don't need to to dip it in water because it's really easy with her. We should just do this. And she is just gonna pee. I mean at this age they kinda started going on their own. But sometimes they do need help. Okay. Sure you're not peeing a lot right now, means you're already pee. Mm-hmm. And to stimulate them to defecate, you just I use this makeup removal pad, and you're just dipping in water, and you're like pushing gently against their anus for like three minutes. Come on now, and I put you back. That's right, puppy. You're a wise little girl, aren't you? You're a wise little girl, aren't you, little puppy? Little girl. That's right. That's you. Uh huh. That's you, little puppy. This is old boy. He hasn't eaten, so he's really, really desperate to eat. 
come on. Okay, another really important aspect. Okay, another another important aspect uh, when taking care of little puppies is that you you need to be careful with um, illnesses. Uh, since they haven't had any milk in their mother, they didn't get to drink any of the colostrum. Uh, they're really, really sensitive, and they're really, you know, predisposed to catch any disease from the outside world. So, when you interact with them, before interacting with the puppies, you're supposed to be disinfecting your hand using sanitary alcohol. Uh, wash your hands really well and change your clothes. So basically, you need to have a set of clothes that you're using only to interact with puppies. So those clothes are only going to be used when you interact with the puppies. It's really important. Uh, if you have other pets in the house, uh, even if they're vaccinated, even if they don't have any, you know, if they don't show any signs of disease, they can still be carriers uh, of diseases. So you should not put the puppies in contact with other pets. In the first uh, weeks of life, first two weeks, um, they're only going to be interested in sleeping and eating, and that's about it. They're not going to do much. They're not going to even be able to walk. They're just going to crawl. And around um, the half of the second week, they're going to start opening their eyes. Um, if the puppy is 18 days old and uh, he still hasn't opened up his eyes, you really need to go to the vet because there might be an infection there. Uh, so you really, really need to pay attention to their eyes to be all cleared up and all woken up by the 18th day of life. Okay, um, when they're born, their um, eyes are shot, their ears are closed, so they are basically blind and deaf. They're going to be completely dependent on you. They should gain weight. You should weight your puppy um, every time after after you feed them. You can weight them before you feed them and after just to see how much they've... Uh, they've eaten but you know they don't stand still on the scale so I can't really tell how much they've eaten I'm just uh, looking uh, on the uh, nursing bottle it's, it's, it's written here how much you're eating so basically you should be weighing them after every meal uh, and it's really important for them to gain weight it's really healthy and really important puppies who don't gain weight in their first uh, days of life in their first weeks of life they may not survive it so that's really a really important aspect but they don't have names yet. I just um, call them with uh, by initials. This one has a little Y on his chest, so I'm calling it. I'm calling him Y. The other one has a V on his chest, so I'm calling V. And the other one is a girl, so I just I'm calling call her yeah, anyway because she's the only girl. <laughs> Another uh, thing to note is the fact that uh, once you start out using one kind of milk formula. You're not supposed to be changing that uh, that formula because you're gonna get diarrhea. Uh, if you want to do that, uh, the change the change should uh, take place really, really like gradually, like in a week. Because if you're gonna if you if you're gonna do it like in a day, um, they can get a really bad diarrhea, and it's very, very dangerous for them because they're losing they lose a lot a lot of fluids when they have diarrhea, and they're so small. And if they have diarrhea for like 24 hours, that can be fatal to them. So you really, really need to pay attention on how you change your diet. Uh, when they're gonna get weaned, it's also really important to start to transition to solid food really gradually. Are you swimming? Are you swimming? Another thing that I notice, and that's also really important, is that males especially, come on now, but occasionally, suck from each other. Um, this is nothing weird, uh, this is nothing embarrassing, it's just a completely normal behavior. They're just looking for, for milk and when they're hungry. You know, this one already uh, learned how to go potty on his own, but I'm still trying to help him out. Uh, okay, so males um, would suck on each other and it's really important to pay attention to because when they're three weeks old, their incisor teeth are starting to come out. And they can hurt each other by doing that. And you should check them every single time when you feed them to see if they have any, any wounds because those wounds can, you know, infect and that can cause a lot of trouble. You can't do anything to this behavior. It's just a natural behavior that's going to disappear once the puppies are going to be weaned at around four weeks old. 
Uh, what you can do is uh, separate the puppies. If you want to separate the puppies um, to prevent them from getting injured, uh, you should keep them warm using uh, bottles with warm water. Their umbilical cord should just dry and fall off by itself. And you should just pay attention not to be any blood in the area or not to be any injury. And if there is, uh, you can use um, iodine and you can use some uh, antibiotic powder. But you gotta be careful for them not to ingest the antibiotic because sometimes they can lick each other. So you should really not use substances that are dangerous for them uh, locally. If you want to apply something locally, you should. Uh, Taking concern the fact, take into account the fact that those substances might might be dangerous for them. Okay, so basically, uh, if the puppy is cold um, and you feed them milk, that can be really dangerous because they cannot metabolize the milk if they're cold. So you should warm them up before feeding them. Okay, once they reach three weeks old, you can notice the fact that they start walking a little bit even if that walk's gonna be like wobbly and they're gonna fall on their butt several times um, they're still learning how to be a dog and they start to show interest in their environment and you can introduce the toys the first toys again make sure they're clean they're cleaned up um, they're you know washed with the warm water or hot water you know in the fourth week is really important for their socialization process. I mean, their brains are developing, they're learning how to interact with their siblings, and they also learn about human contact. So you should kind of start spending a bit more time with them once they're one month old. Uh, when they reach one month old, they should have their first deworming. Some vets say that they should have their first deworming at two weeks old. Some vets say that it's too early at two weeks old. I prefer uh, doing the first deworming to my pups at one month old, once they're going to be one month old. And their first shot should be done at around six weeks. Take into account the fact that uh, it takes two weeks for the antibodies to to uh, develop, so your pup's still going to be sensitive and is still going to be prone to catch diseases after the first shot. So they'll keep them inside your house. Do not take them out for a walk. Do not take them out at all. The other ones who just, just had their dinner, they're just not, they're not crying anymore, they went to sleep. You should clean in their nesting box. It should always be clean because puppies can develop infections really easily. You should change their, you know, towels or puppy pads daily or even more often than that. So that's pretty much it. I mean, this is um, the only information about puppies who are in their first month of life. Yeah, he's still looking for food, although he had... He's had a lot of, a lot of milk, a bit more than it was calculated for, for him. And apparently he's still hungry. But he should calm down and go to sleep. Okay, she's sleeping exactly like Luna. Luna also used to sleep with her belly up, which probably means that she's going to be an alpha female, which is gonna be problematic because Luna is also an alpha female. Yeah. Two alpha females in a household can be war, like, can be hell. After you're done feeding your puppy, you should disinfect or wash with soap and warm water. Uh, your nursing bottle, you know, syringes, or whatever you're using, and you should boil the pan that you used for. Um, mixing the uh, powdered milk with uh, with water. I uh, boil I, I boil some water in the pan every single time, like after every use. And um, you know, that, that way I make sure that um, everything is sterilized and everything is, is clean. Okay, so uh, that was basically all the information that I could think of. If there's anything that I've missed, I would uh, I'll just add in the description of the video and if there's any question that you want to ask me you can comment on this video and I'll just you know do my best trying to answer to all of your questions. Look at my little girl here. Oh right, I forgot to, I forgot to mention it. We're gonna be keeping all three of them. We're gonna be we're gonna be keeping all three of you, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna be having four dogs. 
like three large ones. Maybe I'm gonna manage this somehow. I know, you know, most people go like four dogs. That's that's insane. Three large dogs, and I'm like, you know what? If you want to do something, you're gonna find a way to do it. Ain't that right? Ain't that right? Hmm? You're gonna be a big girl, aren't you? Oh, and you should not, um, I know it's really tempting, it can be really tempting, but you should not touch your puppy to your face because you're usually not washing your face as often as you wash your hands. Like, I basically wash my hands so much these days that my skin has, has gone insanely, insanely dry and I could not use hand creams because I'm like all paranoid that it, it can be, it can be toxic for dogs. But you're not washing your face like 20 times a day, right? So you should not be, you know, putting your puppy like close to your face. I know it's really, it's insanely tempting to do that, but you should just not do it. Because, you know, it's just, it's safer for them. You should, I, I think it's better to be anxious and paranoid rather than going like, uh, nah, it's just gonna be fine. Because they're really sensitive and you should not be taking any chances with them. Thank you for your attention and I shall see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.